this. This is a lot better, huh? I'm surprised Logan Gray hasn't already painted it. I'm sorry, what? Are you stuck up there, buddy? Where are you going? James, where is everybody else? Come on, James. Hey, Derby, I see you. Come here, Derby. Hey, bud. What's up, Derby?
Boy Scout Stun Bunny.
spell that kind of All right, mic check, one, two. How we doing, everybody? Uh, where's the box with the knives and stuff? Oh, there it is, okay. Hmm. Okay, uh, well, I'm gonna still do it in here even though I finally got all the kids to go to the room next door. They'll probably come back in here, right? Give me one sec here. I'm gonna get a pillow. I'm gonna check to make sure you can hear me. I'm gonna settle down and look at the cameras. And then we can have our mailbag. Oh, they all came back in. That's easy. All right, at least we got that going for us. <sighs> oh, <laughs> Kids, I just vacuumed in here. What is going on with this, huh? Who's in charge of cleaning this up? I don't know if that's the right camera to pick, whatever. Okay, uh, let's see. Do we have sounds? Oh, I heard kind of muffled, probably because I'm wearing this fuzzy jacket that's partly over it. Let's see here. Sounds good, okay. Good, let's pretend it's good. Hey, buddy. So you see we decorated for Halloween yesterday. Um, oh, I meant to bring up the, the coffin bed this morning and I forgot, I'll, hopefully I'll remember to do it when I bring the endowments downstairs after mailbag. Um, I was too busy here playing with the kittens, so. Um, news this week, all right, so nothing happened this week, but there's still some news uh, about the upcoming week, which is that first off on Monday, we have uh, Crank going in for her pre-surgical consult. That's where the uh, surgeon gets to take a look at her, make sure that they're okay to do the surgery and kind of come up with a game plan. And then on Wednesday, that's when we bring her in to actually get her surgery in theory. Uh, her surgery, last time we talked to the surgeon, the idea is 
that he's going to basically remove the last like three centimeters. I'm trying, um, I don't know, probably, well, I'm just trying to picture it in my head actually. It's probably a little bit, I don't know, more like that, something like there. Um, of her colon. So, so they're going to remove that, that sort of end portion that she has so much trouble with when she tries to poop. And uh, of course, the surgeon had said that there's probably like a 40% chance of her being incontinent, but at this point, she's pretty leaky all the time anyway because of all the trouble that she has and the fact that she's hurty a lot, so she doesn't want to clean herself as much as maybe she could. It's funny, if you haven't seen it, um, I mean, it's, it is funny. I, I, it's sad, but it's also funny um, that, uh, you know, she gets so upset when I try to clean her bottom or when anybody tries to touch her anywhere around that area at all, when her mom cleans her. And even when she cleans herself, uh, if you've seen her sort of grooming herself and trying to clean her bottom, she'll growl at herself while she's cleaning her butt. So um, at least I know that it's nothing personal. <laughs> uh, so... Um, Fingers crossed that, uh, you know, she comes out of the surgery at the very least with a little bit less um, bother, you know, it, it, even if she it does kind of, if she's leaky, then whatever, that's what it is, what it is. But, uh, you know, he did say, um, at least he estimated more likely than not that she won't be. So fingers crossed that it comes out that way. Um, but, you know, how probability works, it can, you know, if it, even if there's only a tiny chance, there's still a chance. <laughs> Uh, and in this case, the chance isn't so tiny, so uh, we'll see. Uh, hopefully. Now, again, I, I do think there's a chance that we'll go in on Monday and the surgeon will take a look at her and be like, she's not big enough still. And I'll be like, well, I don't think she's getting any bigger. Um, but, uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm also, fingers crossed, I'm hoping that he can do her spay at the same time this time. But, of course, that's not the priority still. So if it's, you know, one or the other, then we'll, we'll obviously prefer to do something that makes her feel better. Um, so that's the big news, and then the, there's also the news that on Wednesday as well, on Wednesday, uh, all these kids are going in to their regular vet for their second vaccines and regular checkup, and so that's also in the morning. I'll drop her off for her surgery in the morning. These guys will go in in the morning, so it's going to be one big trip where I take everybody out, uh, hit one vet and then the other. Uh, which means on Monday, I'm sorry, Wednesday next week, there aren't going to be a whole lot of kittens here in the morning. Um, but these guys will be back by, I don't know, 11 o'clock, you know, probably maybe even earlier than that. And in the meantime, you'll have the faculty to keep an eye on. Uh, what else is news? Nothing. Uh, there's nothing else that's new. Oh, you know what? There is one other thing I wanted to bring up. I was talking to Dawes this morning uh, about how, first off, I think that if, if Gadget has her adopter, and I do think they've got applicants already in line for Gadget, so I was telling them, I think for the first time, I, I don't think I've mentioned to them before, that I feel like if, if Gadget's ready to go, then, you know, they, they can go ahead and, and let her go. I don't know that it's doing her any favors to be with Crank, and I don't know it's doing Crank any favors, really, to be with her mom. Although you may have seen that we're letting them hang out together uh, in, the, in, in Gadget's room pretty often. And I think it does make Gadget, uh, Gadget feels good to have company. I don't think that she cares that it's her, her kid or not, but I think she does feel a little bit better to have somebody there to bother and play with. So, um, oh, but I did also say, you know, since her surgical consult and potentially surgery is coming right up, we can wait and see if that changes anything. Um, but I'm assuming it won't. So uh, I also was telling them about the schedule for these guys, which is that they're, um, Hazel and Bonnet, the two girls, are scheduled for their spay on November 14th. And then the boys are all scheduled for their neuters, I think the 21st. I got to check the schedule. I know that it's right after I come back from my vacation, which is uh, November 16th through November 20th. I'm going to be going to see my mom in Kansas. Uh, so I won't be here for those four days, or most of them anyway. And DJ will be here. That's also her vacation. She's got like a week or a week and a half off of work, and so that's when I scheduled to go. She'll be keeping an eye on the kittens here as best she can. Uh, and so I told Dawes that ideally we would be looking for a new, our next new mom cat to come after I get back from my vacation, which I know is cutting it pretty close. 
we could end up in a situation where these kids all get adopted out and we've got a pregnant mom and no kittens and that's fine with me. I hope it's fine with all of you if that's the way it works out. Um, but I will allow, you know, if somebody shows up earlier then we'll do it. I just, um, I think it's nicer for DJ if she doesn't have to have that extra concern while I'm out of town. Uh, so that was what I was thinking anyway. We'll see how everything shakes out. So. So that's everything we know so far, which is Monday, uh, Crank's surgical consult, Wednesday, Crank's surgery in theory. Uh, Wednesday, these guys are also going in for their um, checkup. Then there is a date with another checkup somewhere, I think, but I don't remember. Uh, and then November 14th, the girls go in for their spays. And I think the 21st, the boys go in uh, for their neuters. I'll be out of town the 16th to the 20th of November. And that is everything, I think. So uh, let's mailbag. Let's see what we got. Let me double check and make sure that everything is still working OK, technically. OK. That does look good. OK, cool. Yeah, everybody's saying enjoy my time with my mom. I will. I'll, I'm sure I'll have a good time. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, I haven't seen her in a while, and I know it's important to her too. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. Um, I'll have more to say about that later, probably as the the date arrives. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, we don't need to talk about that. Let's do mailbag. I want to tell you guys about like, you know, stuff I'm planning and whatever, but that's, that's a whole other story. So let's see what we got here. No letters today, just, just boxes and things. Oh, this is cool. This is like a video game. Uh, I see duck hunt and something that looks like, I don't know, some cat thing. Uh, well, that's a duck. It's not necessarily duck hunt, but it's 8-bit looking. So I got to see what that's all about. This says one bird for each of the mom cats from Bellamy and Professor. All right, Bellamy. And Professor, one bird for each of the mom cats. Huh. Each toy is prepackaged with two catnip pouches. Well, but one is enough for daily use. You can take one out and save it for later, it says. In the included bag. Oh, wow. Okay, this is very duck hunt, although we've got two different kinds here. Look at that. Uh, this guy, this mallard, that's very cool. I love it. He's got the ring neck and everything. Wow, that is some strong catnip scent, too. And then we've got a duck, too, and they're both flat, uh, stuffless, it says, and they're crinkly. And it says there's a bag included to put, a sealed bag to put the catnip into, but there isn't. It's a lie. Um, that's fine. Take a look here, or unless the bag is inside one of them. Then maybe these stuffed ducks. I see. It's not, though. Uh, but there is crinkle. There's two, like it says, there's two packs of catnip. Uh, there's no sealed bag. Hi, oh, it says, Hi, platypus and mallard. Let's have fun. Does it, does it think platypuses are yellow and mallard? I don't know what it thinks. Um, hi, platypus and mallard. Let's have fun. All right. Close enough. I mean, it's close enough to a platypus, I suppose. Ducks aren't really that color yellow either. So we're okay with that. All right. Hop right in there. All right. Back in. One for each mom cat. I love it. Bellamy, those are really cool. Those are, those are fun little... And the fuzz on them is very nice. I'm going to put your note here so that we don't forget. I think they are going to like those. I definitely like those. I love the mallard. You don't see enough of those. There we go. My dad was big into hunting, but I feel like it's, um, I feel like he was more into the stuff, like the gear, than he was into actually hunting, which he, he almost never did. Uh, but uh, I do remember he had like these duck calls. I think I've got them now actually. I think they're packed away with his stuff in our basement. Uh, but the duck calls, I love playing with those as a kid. They're the, the fancy kind that are like an, like an accordion. Like they've got this uh, rubber piece and you, you squeeze them back and forth and then there's a little horn on the end that that pushes the air through and it does. It sounds just like a duck. They're very convincing. They were like hand carved wood on the ends. Um, I loved them. I don't think he ever used them. I think they were just stuff that he liked to, to sort of collect. It's, it was, uh, I feel like I do that sometimes with my hobbies too, with my like electronics and stuff. I feel like there's a, I mean, I've got 
a whole bunch of projects that I've got brand new stuff for that I bought at some point thinking, oh, I'm going to do this. And then it's still just brand new, like unopened. Uh, so, you know, I take after my dad that way, although we have different hobbies. We, we do kind of treat them the same way. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's see what this is. This is some book of some sort. Ooh, glossy. A cat lover's luxury lookbook with AI-generated cats and feline meowsings, not for resale. <gasps> what is this? A cat lover's luxury lookbook. Oh, these AI-generated cats are very convincing and cool, actually. I was expecting them to be all deformed, <laughs> like like happens. No, this is nice. This is a really cool thing. Now, I saw there's a little sticky note in the front that I want to take a look at. These are really pretty, though. Uh, so, let's see what it has to say. Dear Mr. A, I'm from the UK, and I've been a longtime viewer of your channel since Angel. I'm planning to release this book on Amazon November 24th. If you like it, I'd love if you could please tell all your purry friends. Aww. Uh, this copy is an advanced sample, so some of the pages are not finished yet. I'm ordinarily a freelance editor and writer. Keep up the great work and have a floofsome 2025 from Zoe. Zoe, thank you so much. That is so cool. Look at that. I'm elite now. I'm on the inside. I've got the stuff uh, that nobody else has. It's a pre-release. Wow, I feel legit now. Um, I would have. I love AI. I know that there's people talk about ethics and they talk about uh, you know their fears and stuff, and I hear a lot of that. Um, but I'm an optimist, you know, at heart, and I think uh, I am just filled with so much enthusiasm for the potential. Um, you know, for, for AI uh, and, you know, the ways that we're able to use it now and the things that we're able to do. And I don't know if this is the case for you, Zoe, um, but I do, I do think that this could be an example of what I think is so fantastic about the modern AI is, you know, you say in your note that you are a freelance editor and writer, presumably not an artist, but I wonder if then you were able to create all of the wonderful... Look, this guy's got robot legs. That's so cool. And he's looking out the window at birds. Um, <laughs> it's wonderful art of these cats in here. And I wonder if you were able to create all that yourself because of AI. Uh, you know, because of the existence of AI. Uh, this is so cute. We've got little alien costumes that they're wearing. Um... That's the kind of thing that I think is so incredible is that it, it gives people that have, it, it, it's another tool for people that have some sort of a, a vision or some sort of a thing that they've always wanted to do, but they just don't, they just can't do it themselves. You know, they can't um, art, maybe, like I can't art, uh, but uh, I, I think that the potential for then using AI to art um, is, is amazing. It, it gives you a different way of expressing yourself that, that maybe you've always wanted to but never had the talent or the time to develop the talent. Uh, it reminds me of something. I was listening to a podcast just the other day of, um, uh, uh, what's his name, Adam uh, Conover, the guy that does uh, Adam Ruins Everything. He's got a podcast now that I listen to sometimes and he had a recent episode where he was talking to experts in AI. And he said um, something about, God, I wish I could remember exactly the way he said it, but he was talking about the language models like ChatGPT and how fundamentally he, he thought that they were, they were kind of useless because if you wanted to, say, write a letter to your friend, um, you, know, you, would, you would do that. You wouldn't use an AI to do that. Uh, you know, that wouldn't seem right somehow. And, you know, I really, I can't do his argument injustice, but he, he basically was making the point that if you wanted to write something and express your, your personal emotions to somebody, then that's what you would do. You wouldn't, you wouldn't use AI for that. In fact, he says AI would be useless for that. And I think he's really got the wrong take there because I know in my own life, uh, there's so many times that I feel something that I would like to express to people and I, I just don't know the right words to do it. But I can go to something like ChatGPT and say, look, 
you know, these are all the ways that I feel. How can I say that succinctly to someone? And it comes up with something that I, you know, lots of times it, it will come up with something that I think is perfect, like perfectly expresses what I wanted to say in a way that's much better than I could have said it myself. And I think that's a wonderful tool for people to have access to that way. I, th I think it's, it's amazing. Um, it, it really is. It's just, uh, it's fantastic. And the thing that blows my mind more than anything about AI, of course, is, is not the things like ChatGPT, but the fact that I can run the smaller models on my home computer myself is, that's the part that really blows my mind, that my computer can, can do this stuff. I don't know. I can't even... It, 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 I don't know. Sometimes it just makes me, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, see, I need ChatGPT to figure out what I'm trying to say right now. It's, uh, it's almost like a childhood dream, you know? You're, you're a kid growing up in the 80s and all the TV and movies and stuff that you consume, you know, you, you want to believe that you're going to have a computer that can think and talk to you and, uh, you know, uh, it, the AI thing, and then now we do. I mean, it's obviously it's not thinking. I'm, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that it can do so much more and be so much more creative and interactive in a way. And it's, I know it's not really creativity or whatever, but boy, it just, it, it does the job uh, fantastically. And it's just, it literally, I, do, I hate to use a cliche, it's like a dream come true in a way. And it just gets better all the time. So, uh, so I think that's fantastic, and I hope everybody here. Let's just uh, let's show this title one more time before I put it away. I'm excited to have a better look at it myself. A cat lover's luxury look book. And uh, oh, is there is there an author uh, page on this? I don't see an author listed on the outside actually. Uh, Zoe Smith. Okay, there you go. So Zoe Smith. I was just going to uh, take a look at the copyright to see if it said anything interesting about the fact that, uh, you know, it was, some of it was generated by AI, but it, all it says is at the bottom of here, it does say images generated using doll E, so we know which AI was used, and uh, that is really cool. So, uh, thank you so much for sending that to us. Okay, now I'm going to put it back in here, and I'm not even going to get back in the sleeve this time, but we'll just use your whole envelope that way. Thank you so much for sending that to me. I'm, I'm flattered and it's cool. So thank you so much. Okay, next up. Ooh. All right, sometimes you get ping pong balls, but we have table tennis balls, which is even fancier. And is there a note? Gift to kittens, work involved. Bounce on the floor and watch as kittens try to catch them in chase. Uh, kittens having fun worth Picking up of ping pong balls afterwards. Have a great day from Breezy Melody One. Oh man, that takes me back to uh, Captain Kangaroo, right? Didn't he have a running gag where he would dump like a whole bunch of ping pong balls on somebody? It's a it's vague memories because I was very young when Captain Kangaroo was big. Um, but yeah, I think I, ping pong balls make a great cat toy, and sometimes I play with them just individually like this. Uh, for a while, ping pong balls were a Teaspoon's favorite thing. He's sitting right there watching. I wonder if he'll be interested. Teaspoon? Well, he's definitely watching from over there. I don't know if he's going to get up and do it, though. Let's try to get his attention one more time. I'm trying to land one right behind him. It's like a... Oh, did it! Yeah! Wow. Uh, I never played beer pong because that got popular after my time, I think. but I still got the skills. Okay. Um, thank you so much. That's, that's, uh, those are great. Ping pong balls or table tennis balls, always fantastic. Uh, that's from Breezy Melody One. And I am tempted to just dump all of them on the floor right now and see what happens, but these kids are already running pretty wild. Besides, wouldn't it be more fun to watch what Gadget would do with that? Um, I don't know, I say more fun like we couldn't do both. I actually have a, a box in the basement that we use for endowments that's full of, um, well, they're actually mostly not ping pong balls. And ping pong balls are, I think, the best because they're so light and they bounce and they make a great noise when you toss them. So ping pong balls are the best. But the ones that we have downstairs are mostly um, those, I think they're fake golf balls, the ones that maybe you use for practice or something. 
There's a bunch of them that are like a high density foam golf ball, and then there's a bunch that are more like wiffle balls, but tiny, you know, this the same size as a ping pong ball. And I've just dumped all that stuff together, uh, including a bunch of pith balls that are also that same size, into one giant box. And I don't know why it never really occurred to me that I could bring the box up here and just pour it out like Captain Kangaroo and uh, see what happened. That could be a fun one just to try someday. Maybe we'll do that. Meanwhile, they are having a lot of fun with that ping pong ball, but they're running off camera with it now. They're pushing it all the way across the kitchen. I can hear it bouncing back there. Ooh, waterproof blanket. Oh, those are always great. Man, we can never have enough of those. And there's more in here too. All right, hang on. Let's see what the notes are. Cat dancers for the tiny hats as endowments from Bellamy and Professor. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, thank you for the little hat cat dancers. Those are the, uh, the toy that's the wire with a little bit of cardboard on the end. It's so simple, but cats go crazy for it. It's a fantastic cat toy. So cat dancers, tiny hats, endowments, and then a blanket for cranky pants endowments. Oh, that's so thoughtful. I did, I wrote a long thing to, um, to Dawes. I was saying, I was talking to them about, you know, plans this morning. I wrote them a long thing about finding the right adopter for Crank and, you know, saying that I think that she should get adopted out sooner rather than later, even if it means letting her adopter take her before we feel like she's completely settled. Uh, I don't want to do the same thing that we did with Teaspoon, where we felt like we had to keep him until all of his surgeries and everything was done and we had him completely solved. Because if you do that, then, then you end up keeping him. And, and we, can't, we can't keep more cats, not if we want to keep doing Kitten Academy anyway. Um, so I think there's a, a bigger benefit to the cat world at large if we don't keep Crank. Um, but I was saying to Dawes, I think that finding her an adopter sooner rather than later probably benefits us and her adopter too, you know. Um, even if it means that we have to help out with her surgeries or whatever else comes up, you know, after the fact. Maybe she doesn't get to get spayed this week. But I would still say if somebody came by that was going to take care of her and her doctor next week that we should do that and then, you know, say, all right, we'll cover the spay whenever it happens. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, that's my take on that anyway. Uh, I haven't gotten confirmation from Dawes that they're on board with that, but I bet they will be. So this is really pretty. I'm not going to unwrap it because it's so nicely packaged, but I can see it's super floofy. It's like my favorite ones. Oh, I took it away. My favorite ones are the ones that DJ bought that are the cloud and the, the uh, flowers, the green flowers and the blue cloud that was in here for a long time. Uh, and the flowers that are typically on my chair upstairs that is, you know, my, my chair. Um, and uh, uh, this is the same style as that with the like, real thick, nice Sherpa. It's exactly like them. So this is my favorite kind. Those are both waterproof blankets, too. I'm imagining they're probably exactly the same brand. Um, excellent. That's, that's my favorite of all the waterproof blankets because it's so floofy and fuzzy, and it doesn't feel like a waterproof blanket, but it definitely is. It's, it stood the test against Crank in particular. So uh, Bellamy, Professor, thank you so much. I'm going to actually write uh, Crank on this one. So let me find my pen real quick. Crank. Perfect. So yeah, um, I mean, discussing what Crank needs from her adopter, I think that's a little premature. I mean, I'll, uh, what I was telling Dawes is like, here's how she is now, and I think that if somebody's going to adopt her, they should plan on it being this, even if, you know, fingers crossed it's not. Um, but, you know, she needs somebody that can deal with the fact that she's got a leaky bottom a lot of the time, that she doesn't always hit the litter box correctly. Um, you know, there's going to be poop. The waterproof blanket is great. Uh, I've been training her to wear a suit and a diaper, although I don't think that her adopter or I would count on putting a diaper on her all the time. That doesn't seem appropriate, but you could put one on her like, like we've used it to uh, let her stay with us in the bedroom overnight because she loves to climb under the blankets and snuggle with DJ up real close under the blankets. And you can imagine it's kind of a mess if she ends up leaking a little bit in there. Uh, so the, the, uh, the, having the diaper on her makes that work out really well um, and everybody gets what they want. So, you know, her doctor should be able to deal with that kind of stuff potentially. Again, we don't know how things are going to shake out after this week. But uh, I would want somebody that at least had a good plan and an ability to deal with that stuff. Um, and also, I was saying to Dawes that, you know, I would teach somebody how to give an enema to her. It's easy to do. It is. It's very easy to do, actually. Uh, much easier than you might imagine. So, 
uh, she does need that once in a while too and she gets frequent little baths where I just I fill up the, the sink and I just put her back end in it and sort of wash it off real quick she hates it it's that's a, actually more difficult to do than the enema just give her a little bath but uh, but you do it, you know, that's, uh, that's part of the deal. And we'll do it for as long as we need until the right person comes along. But hopefully there's somebody that, that can uh, sort of, like, like I understand, you know, she's, she's, she's a great kitten and she's, she's so fun and cute and loving and the right person will, will find that, I think, and, and feel like they can, um, you know, do something wonderful for her. So that's my hope anyway. All right, what do we got here? We got the knife guard. That's uh, very. That's probably the fanciest knife guard we've ever had. Look at that. It's got a little. I could hang this up and save it for next time. And then if anybody like a knife wielding maniac comes at me, I'll have exactly what I need. I'll be like, ah, I got you. Uh, okay. Uh, this is the note. Okay, to read on stream. And we've got a little kitty holding a box that says fragile, not. Uh, we got a pineapple. We got a coffee that says wake up on it. This is very personalized. I can see that. And we have a surprised looking little tuxie cat on the back. Very cool. Oh, this is awesome. This is some sort of a painting of a little orange cat wearing a swimsuit and an inner tube in the water. That's so cute. Thank you so much for all you do for this community. You are cherished. Aunt Susie of Camp Crazy Kitty. Oh, thank you, Aunt Susie of Camp Crazy Kitty. And I saw that you've got this logo that you drew on the outside. It's like an S with a cat in it. I see how that works. For S for Aunt Susie. Aunt Susie of Camp Crazy Kitty. Perfect. Now, this is really cool. Striped floating ring cat. Okay, well, I guess that does exactly describe it. I don't know what I was expecting. All right. Oh, oh my goodness. That's a very generous donation. I was not expecting that either. I'm going to trump that right in there. Okay. Just dump it right in. Uh, thank you so much, Aunt Susie of Camp Crazy Kitty. My goodness. Um, hello, Mr. A and Dr. DJ. Thank you so much for creating this incredible community. We do have some differences. Some of us love coffee. Some of us love tea. Some of us eat our mac and cheese at Jamestown with forks and others insist spoons are the appropriate utensil. Oh boy, I use a fork. Uh, I didn't realize that that was part of the arguments that we were having. Uh, the true shape of butter, yes, we've had that uh, block or stick is occasionally debated in the Food Channel. Some of us have dogs, some fish, and some guinea pigs in addition to our feline overlords as pets. I have a pet rock named Dave. All of us have uh, your faculty, all the mom cats, every single kitten that has attended the academy, Dr. DJ, and you in our hearts. Thank you for all you do for this community. Oh, that's so sweet. I do, um, I think that the, the fun that we have sort of debating the right shape of butter or, you know, the right kind of mac and cheese, it's all in good fun. You know, it's, it's not really anything that anybody's taking to heart. Uh, it's just, a, just, you know, and that's what I like about it is that we can have these differences and still appreciate each other. Um, I caught up with my good friend Dragon Maker at KA Con, and we put together the Dragon Wings for Hazelnut and the Hats and Gowments. The donation is for the War Chest, or as you see fit. Please nose boop a kitty for me. Boop! Right there, buddy Fez. You're getting it, because you're right there. Um, all the best, and may the fur be with you. Aunt Susie of Camp Crazy Kitty. P.S. The note got too long for the card. Enjoy both. P.S. Just a little tissue paper included. Not really necessary, but if a kitten... Plays with it. I get to mark a square on my bingo card. Okay, well, here we go. I don't think Fez is going to have any choice. Look, oh, would you want it? Do you want oh, That's so cute. Okay, there you go, pal. Oh, he's going to get up and get that piece I threw. All right. So these are the dragon wings you were talking about. So these are dragon maker catnip dragon wings. I suppose this is one, two, three, four, five. So that's one for each kitten and one for their mom. Beautiful. I love these prints too. Is that an owl? That looks very owl to me. I think it is. And then we've got paw prints and we've got sort of this uh, snowflakey design. Ooh, and this purple stripes, purple and black stripes. I don't know if the camera picks that up well enough for you to see the stripes in there, but that's super cool. All right. Those are wonderful. Thank you so much. I know the cats always love that. I'm going to put that right in there, along with your note and the knife guard. That way I can see that again and appreciate it. 
when I hand out the endowments, which I have to do. That's the reason that I, that I didn't find um, the um, coffin yesterday when I was going downstairs to find the Halloween stuff is that the coffin is not with the Halloween stuff right now. It is uh, with the you know mail that we've received since the last time I resorted the endowments. Uh, and probably buried under that, but I, I have a general idea of the location of it. So, uh, uh, what was my point? My point was I need to sort out all those endowments um, at some point soon. Even if they're not getting adopted soon, it's getting to be quite a pile. It's going to be fantastic for these kids. Oh, now that's interesting. Uh, Kitten Academy from Bremel One. I don't think there's a note. Is this what it says it is? Because if it is, oh, there is a note. It's right there. Multi-use gift, baking soda for laundry, cleaning, deodorizing, over the shoulder for good luck. Oh no, that's salt. Haha, ha, from Breezy Melody One. Oh, Breezy Melody One, thank you so much. You know, I keep um, little eight ounce boxes of baking soda for those. Th oh, this is nicer than that uh, for those. This is in shakers already. I have an old um, uh, you, uh, uh, pepper, uh, peppercorns. It's, a, it's about this size, actually. It's a... Uh, it, it, I bought peppercorns at the store like you do, and the top of it had a shaker on it like it does sometimes. Uh, and so I just repurposed that after it was empty for putting the baking soda into. However, what I was about to say is I ran out the other day and I meant to order more and I don't think I did. Or I'm not going to check right now. I don't think I did. I think I forgot to order more. So this came perfect at the perfect time i had i, I guess made a mental note to, to order more and it, it that mental note got misplaced uh the thing that jarred my memory was was this uh, arriving so breezy melody thank you so much this is like i said perfect and i love new refillable shaker yes and it and it's uh, i see that the shaker comes with 12 ounce but i'm pretty sure the ones i buy are eight ounces can that be right that seems small um so uh, I only have the one peppercorn shaker right now, and I usually split our cleaning supplies between upstairs and downstairs, which means that I has to get carried back and forth quite a bit. So this is, it's ideal in so many ways. I, I bet you didn't even know. Uh, Breezy Melody One, thank you so much. That is perfect. All right. <laughs> I love the way this, the, they put the sticker on this side, so it just says, Da Shaker. Uh, that's, uh, that's very sort of Midwestern there. All right, the shaker. What do you got, Maggie? You want that? I need you to get off that box so I can open it. Oh, man, he's, she slid in. Maggie, I need this box. This is the next one, right? Okay, nothing else for us to open. Look out, look out. You're being a real Ari right now. That's what Ari usually does. Oh, you lost it. Look, it's right here. You ready? Oh, no, I got it first. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Oh, that was a bad throw. All right, you guys can win. You win that time. Oh, no, I get it back. How did that happen? Oh, man, another bad throw. I hit the windowsill and it went the wrong way. I guess that's more fun. All right, uh, my knife. There it is. Huh. Interesting. Ooh. Oh, this is full of stuff. All right. I didn't know if we were going to open this and see like one big item, but no, we have stuff, including a, a assemble yourself. Some assembly required newspaper. Okay. Here's the note right at top and ooh, temptations. Limited edition Temptations pickle catnip? I don't know. The front of this is artwork. Creepy catnip. I see. Creepy catnip. The front of this has a picture of a cat uh, that is looking at or was looking at a, a growing catnip. And then there's two mice. One is laying in front of the cat laughing at him. And one is behind the cat holding a pickle that the cat has just noticed and is jumping up in fright. Uh, so that's, that's actually very cute artwork. Okay, I'm going to put that right there. The note, okay, to read on Scream. Oh, very Halloween theme here. And we have the card. So where do we start? I think we start with the note. Okay, let's see here. 
The note. Ghoulish greetings, Mr. A. Halloween is my favorite time of year, with Christmas following in a close second. Usually I'd be sending out my annual Halloween treats, but it gets tricky, see what I did there, sending them through the mail because fresh edibles do have an expiration date, so I worry they won't taste as good by the time they arrive at their destination. Now I just make them for my local friends and family that I bring to them in person, but I still wanted you to have fall-themed sweets to eat. So I did the next best thing and bought some! I know you always say you'd rather we send gifts for the kitties, but when you see what I got, you'll understand why I just had to get them. All right, enclosed you will find one box each of Stroop Waffle. I did see the Stroop Waffle, so we can pull that out while we're talking about it. Two boxes of Stroop Waffle. Oh, yep. I did not know that there was such a thing as the authentic Dutch pumpkin spice Stroop Waffles. So I'm skeptical of the fact that pumpkin spice Stroop Waffles can still be labeled the authentic Dutch, but that's okay. Uh, so. Uh, Stroop waffles in the two best flavors of fall, pumpkin and maple. Of course, I got some for myself as well, and I can assure you that you're going to love them if you haven't tried them already. I have not tried them already. I had no idea that such a thing existed. Uh, you mentioned that DJ likes maple, so I thought of her when I saw this small jar of maple spread. I'm also enclosing some maple fudge that I'm sure you both will enjoy. Oh, 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 that's the maple fudge, and it just some of it fell out because that bag's more open than I expected. Little cubes of maple fudge, that's perfect. I bet DJ will actually uh, enjoy that. I would enjoy it too, but I let DJ have any of the snacks that she will go for because it's so rare to see her um, eating snacks. That reminds me that uh, it was sometime last year, I think it feels like, I don't know, uh, where Jamestown sent us some of those uh, chocolate bonbons or truffles that were her favorite, that were um, local to her, I think, uh, and there's still a giant box of those, but I wanted to mention the fact that lately DJ's been having one or two every day, uh, which I think is really cute. So they're still very loved. Um, okay, maple spread. I, what is a maple spread? Is that like a jelly or a jam or something? Or like a maple butter? I don't know. We'll get to the bottom of it eventually. Okay, well that's not as easy to locate in here, so we'll come back around. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I found them at this amazing store called World Market that sells all things international, including home decor. DJ would love their Indian stuff, but I love going there for the edible delights that usually can't be found in American stores. Like green tea Kit Kats. Oh man, those are, yeah, uh, in Japan they have Kit Kats come in every flavor, uh, green tea being one of them. And I think it's so cool. Uh, I found these once before at a Comic Con in Boston and was so excited things like this actually exist. They're delicious, but probably an acquired taste like green tea Pocky, which believe it or not, I found at my local grocery store. Yeah, my grocery store has Pocky too. Isn't that weird? Man, that stuff's gotten so popular. Uh, in fact, at my grocery store, I just saw like a Pocky that is also got crushed almonds on the outside, which I thought I'm, that was the first time I'd ever seen that. And I really wanted them, but I'm like, nope, I'm being good. Not going to do it. Uh, World Market has a website you can order those from, but it's more fun to be able to buy them in person. I love trying new things, and imported sweets like these are made with a lot less chemicals and additives than their American counterparts, so the quality is so much better. They're definitely worth the extra money. I've included a fall, uh, I've also included a few fall flavored tea bags for my personal collection. The caramel apples become one of my favorites and is really good with caramel coffee creamer, sugar free for me. Yeah, um, I, so this is my chance to mention that um, DJ can be very particular about her tea. She likes one exact green tea, and that is it. Uh, it's the Bigelow organic green tea, I think. Um, but uh, I recently went through and cleaned out all of our cabinets, and I took all the teas that we have been accumulating and put them upstairs in a drawer for myself, and I've been drinking a ton of tea trying to get off of the Diet Coke. So in the evenings, instead of drinking so much Diet Coke, I drink tea, uh, a lot of it. And uh, I've been going, working my way through all of the teas that people have sent us for quite a while. And it's a fun, it's been fun for me, like trying out all these different flavors and things. I'm really enjoying it. So I'm probably going to be the one that gets to check these out. Um, we'll find those two in a minute. Uh, this is a Halloween scratcher. Oh, I see it stands up a big box, paper bag with cat scratcher. Huh. 
includes catnip to entice your cat to play. So this is a bag that has a cat scratcher that fits into it. What a cool idea. Man, that's a really cool idea. Um, that uh, accordion style giant bag tunnel that was sent uh, last week, the week before, I think it was the week before, was awesome. It was, turned out to be just as great as uh, the person who sent it said it was, but it also got pooped and peed in very quickly, so it didn't last here as long as it should have. I think for most cats, the, the people that don't have to worry about Loganberry and Crank, um, uh, would, would find it to be a fantastic cat toy. And I see this is along the same line, so I'm going to be careful not to leave it where Loganberry and Crank are going to find it and maybe ruin it right away, because it looks like a lot of fun. But I know Teaspoon will be right in it, of course. Um, where was I? I'm also sending some fun things for the felines I thought were really cute. I thought of Teaspoon when I saw this cool little cardboard scratcher that comes with a festive bag to put it in. Of course, there's also the usual catnip toys, including a kicker I bet Gadget and or Hazelnut would love. Uh, that distracted me. I lost my spot. And this package of pink ones that caught my eye. The bag is skull-shaped and I think may be reusable. This is my first time actually sending stuff for the kitties because I think Kitten Academy needs more Halloween stuff if it were up to me. The main room would already be decked out for Halloween, but you're not me, and thank goodness for that because I'm such a hot mess. Ha ha. <laughs> well, we did it. We did it anyway. Um, so I'm here to help set the mood. All these toys are for immediate deployment around the Academy. There's also a bag of Halloween-themed cat treats. Yes. I also couldn't resist these bright orange socks with adorable ghosts on them that I spotted at Target. I was tempted to keep them for myself, but if you saw my crazy comfort sock collection, you'd understand why I had to pass on them. Aww. I know you like reading newspapers and publications from different cities that viewers send you, so I'm also throwing in two lengthy promotional brochures that I picked up from my most recent visit to the Halloween capital of the world, Salem, a.k.a. Witch City. Uh, even though I don't live there, my best friend moved there in 95, so I got to know the city pretty well because I went there to visit a lot. Three of my ex-boyfriends also live there, and I've spent so much time in that place that I know my way around it even better than my own city which is only 30 miles away. Some of our friends thought I actually lived there, which is how you know you spend way too much time in one place. But there's so many fun things to do there, including museums, live theater, art shows, maritime activities, historic house tours, and there's no shortage of fabulous shops, cafes, and restaurants. My favorite thing about Salem, however, is the architecture, and you'll find stunning homes and buildings dating back to the 1600s. I figured you'd get a kick out of browsing these brochures. Well, it's time to wrap this up before this letter turns into a novel. Enjoy the card and treats, and I hope you and all the fur babies have a monstrously macabre meowloween. Very ghouly yours, Leanna Conda. Aw, Leanna Conda. Uh, Leanna, thank you so much. I love that name. I, don't, I still can't figure out if that's a real name or not. Your parents could have just been the awesomest parents of all time. Uh, either way, that's a great name. Okay, we also have the card. Let's take a look at that real quick. Knock, knock, who's there? Eyes. Eyes who? Uh, eyes, so excited for Halloween this year, aren't you? Hope it's a happy one. All right, best witches. Best witches from Leanna Conda. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for that. That's cute. Okay, I'm going to move this stuff out of the way a little. Hi, Maggie, what are you doing? Are you on my lap? Do you want to come here and sit in my lap, or you just smell the yummy treats? What is it? Come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Oh, wah, wah, wah. complain, 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 complain. Why? Why? I know you like to sit in my lap. I know you like to sit in my lap. Okay, not right now, though. That's fine. All right, let's see about the rest of the stuff that you said was in here. Oh, these are the socks. These are, oh, these are nice little uh, fuzzy socks. They're very fuzzy. It says Boo Crew, and it's got a bunch of cat ghosts on it. I think they're cat ghosts. That's what they look like to me. Maybe they're just ghosts. This one could definitely be a cat, though. He's got, like, a cat nose. Uh, the one with the hat here has got, like, a cat nose, don't you think? I do. And uh, his little mouth. Oh, I think maybe he's smoking a pipe. I was going to say it looks like whiskers. That's fine. Either way, Boo Crew, very cute socks. Um... Oh, this is heavy. This must be the maple spread. Wow. Turkey Hill maple spread. Ingredients, pure maple syrup. That's it. That's just maple syrup, but it's been made into a spread. Now, that's interesting. I at least expected it to be like a butter or something. 
I'm gonna have to check that out. The teas that you sent, I'm excited to try out. The Bigelow and Twinnings brands, all right. Cool caramel apple and chai pumpkin spice. Now that's fun. I think my favorite tea right now, since I've been drinking so much, first off, I always enjoy an oolong tea. Uh, so I bought a giant like tin of oolong for myself and uh, I've been enjoying that fairly regularly. But uh, I was also a, um, I think it's Bigelow brand and it is chai, it's a chai spice vanilla. It's both, it's like a vanilla chai um, Bigelow and that's that's got to be my number one. It's because it's got a little bit of sweetness to it and a little bit of flavor and it's a black tea. I need that caffeine. Uh, that's that's really good. Okay, let's see. This is oh, this is the Salem Discover Salem's Point Neighborhood. And I see, I'm very excited to read that. Huh? Oh, it does. It shows you all the things to do and a map. Oh, that's fantastic. Wow, everything I need to figure it out. I feel like um, the town that we live in, Monroe, has a sort of a connection there. Uh, we've got a famous um, haunting, I guess, I don't know, uh, occultist that, that lived or lives in town, I'm not sure. Um, the one, if you've seen the Annabelle movies, that's based on that doll and the people, and I can't think of their name right now, uh, but they're just down the way a little bit from here. Uh, where all that originated and they used to have a museum that people could go to but lately they're like absolutely do not come near our house I think they got tired of all the people um, so so obviously I haven't seen it myself um, but there's still a number of like sh shops in town that are capitalizing on that uh, with sort of occult spooky stuff uh, let's see Salem haunted happenings wow all right another little travel guide those are so fun oh man that's as fun as a paper and more colorful too and it's got all the little ads and things. That's my favorite part. Wow, they really do. I, every single ad in here is something that is like spooky, haunted, occultist, you know, kind of stuff. All of them. Uh, so that, that town has really built themselves up around one thing, haven't they? That's pretty cool. I like it. All right, uh, there's still some more in here. Happy Halloween. It's a treat bag. And inside the treat bag is, oh, hey, look at that. It's, it's Kit Kats. That's the green tea Kit Kats. I didn't realize you sent some. I thought we were just having a conversation about them. That's so good. I've had those before and they are yummy. Uh, then we have a bag of toys. Oh, I see it is shaped like a skull. I don't think I would have noticed that if you hadn't said so, though. It's kind of subtle. Even with the boo at the bottom that kind of looks like teeth, like it kind of just gives you that impression. Uh, that's really cool and it's all pink and cute, but it's also all ghosts and the uh, boo and little scary things. That's uh, that's fantastic. What a great set of cat toys. Also a stack of pumpkins. Also we've got the pink and we've got a green one wearing sunglasses because he's cool. That we can just leave out somewhere I think for them to kick and play with. And we made it all the way to the bottom of that. All right. Uh, Leanna, thank you so much. That's a lot of really fun stuff. That's a lot for us to go through. And I am going to enjoy it. Oh, they knocked over the, ten the ping pong balls behind me. I didn't realize they're going everywhere back here. Ah, uh, well, I got some attention. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you. Okay, one more box. The one that Maggie's sitting on. Maggie, I need it now. All right. Okay, this one probably won't last as long because it is a drop shipment from Amazon. Ooh, but it is something interesting. It's a box in a box. Uh, what is this? It's a box is in a box, actually. And something that's so flat, I can't identify it. It says, oh, cat leaf bed. Interesting. Hang on. Hang on. The notes are all buried underneath this. Ah, and stuck. Okay. Enjoy your gift. All right, hang on. You've got a name here, but let's make sure that it's the only name. Nah, there's the real one. Okay, I thought so. Let me just look for any extra notes. Nope, that's it. Okay, dear Kitten Academy family, Mr. A and Dr. DJ, dearest faculty, that's UT. I hope all are well. 
Since it's getting colder and darker outside, inside must be cozy, and because there are never enough cozy places to have, please enjoy from Sweet Cherry Flavor. All right, Sweet Cherry Flavor, that's a, that's a fun name. Um, I know it's not the first time you've written to us. Uh, let's see, now this says Cat Leaf Bed, which does sort of suit the theme that we've got going here. Oh, oh wow, it's just, it's just a pad that is a cat leaf. Uh, that, I'm sorry, that is a leaf. It's just a big uh, mat that is a leaf. That's perfect, and it, I bet it's gonna poof up a lot too. I can see how it's quilted. And the quilting is in sort of a leaf-like pattern too. That's gonna be so pretty once the wrinkles come out of it. And it's a perfect little pad for our kids to sit on. Fantastic. Uh, we go through, we use so many little things like those pads and the waterproof pads and stuff. And um, uh, especially like after I've given little Crank an enema, I need to put her in her cage for a little while until she works everything out so she doesn't make a mess everywhere. But I always put some sort of a, like she loves little soft pads. She loves, um, we've got these little squares that are just this big. They're probably about eight inches on a side. Little squares of the marshmallow bed material that have just a little bit of padding inside them. They came with the, the rocket ship that used to be in here. They perfectly fit in. I think they came with the rocket ship. They came with one of the cat beds. I'm pretty sure, or, or towers or something. I'm pretty sure it was the rocket. Um, and I just put that square in there and she, she gets on it and she needs on it. She loves that material. And then it gets super poopy, but because it's so small, it's easy to just toss it in the wash, you know? Um, so uh, it really works out. So this kind of thing is, is ideal uh, for her. This looks like it. it might also be a leaf, except much, much larger. Is it? What is it? There's something, there's a pattern. Actually, it looks like a kiwi, because I see little kiwi seeds here. Is that what it is? Also, it's brown on the outside and green on the inside. All right, I'm going kiwi. Let's see what we got, uh, if I can get it out. Oh, oh, you know what it says on the outside? Kiwi, and this one's watermelon. Oh, I ruined the surprise, okay. Uh, and it's a two-in-one drawstring bread bed, so I even know what it's like. It's the ones that we've seen them before that lay out perfectly flat, but if you tighten the drawstring that goes around the perimeter, then the ends stand up and it makes a bed that you can sit in. So now that I've described it perfectly, I'm not going to try to get it out of this little cylinder yet because it is too nicely packed. Let's take a look at the colors for the watermelon, though. Look at that, they, they packed these with knife guards. Like somebody at the manufacturer has really got the message about how to do this stuff. That's pretty clever, all right. Um, this one is the watermelon. Okay, and it's, it's very similar design actually. It's probably almost identical. It's even got the pips um, around the outside. Uh, but this one is pink with a green outside of course and a little bit of white rind on there too for detail. Excellent. Oh, those are so fun. Very fruity. I love kiwi fruit. I like pineapple. I mean watermelon. Why did I say pineapple? I like watermelon also. Uh, I do go through a fair amount of both. I haven't had a kiwi in a while. Um, I don't know. It just seems like it's, they seem overpriced at our local store lately. So I've just been like, all right, there's other stuff I can have. Uh, and it's hard to get a kiwi that's just right too, because I find, I don't know how you feel about it, but if they get just the slightest bit overripe or bruised, the flavor goes awful, like immediately. Um, but also you can't eat them when they're not ripe enough because they're just so uh, fibrous when they're, when they're not quite ripe. So you gotta hit it like perfectly right in that time, um, like one day that it's, that it's ideal and they're so good. Uh, but if you wait too long or you don't wait long enough, it's not so good. Um, where was I? I guess that was it, wasn't that teaspoon? You like that leaf, buddy? You got right in there. Well, that was mailbag. That was it. Uh, I'm going to take this stuff and put it away. And when I do, I'm, I'm trying so hard to remember to dig out that coffin. And I think there was some other Halloween stuff that came in at the same time that I might find with it. Uh, so, uh, we will do that. It's buried six feet under all the other stuff, <laughs> uh, appropriately enough. Uh, I don't think it's actually six feet deep down there. It's probably a good foot and a half to two feet though. Maybe more than that. Maybe, maybe as much as three in places. Uh, all right. 
So what am I doing? Uh, how am I going to get started here? Okay, I guess we just start putting things away. Even if we don't do it in the most efficient manner, that's fine. Oh, we can just make multiple trips. I found uh, we've got the, the, this is the plastic part of one of the leaves for the tree behind me. And I don't know where the leaf part went to, so interesting. These kids are really starting to take things apart. Okay. I am going to also turn off my microphone and put on the regular mic before I forget and say or do something embarrassingly noisy, like slurp my coffee or, I don't know, go to the bathroom. So uh, let's do that right now before I forget. Oh, I just looked at my phone and I'm scrolled back to the conversation about what to eat mac and cheese with. Yeah, I always prefer to eat things with a fork when it's possible. Even if, like, I have a curry um, that's, like, you know, mostly just coconut milk, I'll still dig out the parts that I want to eat with a fork or use a fork. Well, I guess not always. I get to a spoon sometimes, but very often I'll, I'll reach for that fork first anyway. I guess I'm just a fork guy. You know, you got fork guys, you got spoon guys. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, where are we? Okay, mic time. All right, that ought to put us on the regular mic, and I'm going to put this one away and charge it up before I forget. fun for all of you. I really enjoyed it. Let's see if we can fit everything in this big box to carry downstairs. Everything that goes downstairs anyway. Which is none of that. Oh, I'm reaching for it. This can go though. This can go. These can go. That does not. This does. These should probably get deployed. I might just add these balls to that big box I was talking about downstairs and then at some point we can bring it up and just dump the whole thing and I feel like doing a lot of pick up. I was just, just wondering whether my shop vac would pick up ping pong balls and make that, that easy to clean up. I don't know if it would or not. I guess it's going to something we might end up having to try. Okay, uh, I bet it would. I think the diameter of the tube is big enough and anything that you can fit in there is going to work. So. Okay, uh, what am I doing? I'm going to take all the snacks and put them in the snack spot. Yeah, I see a very poopy giraffe. All right, we're going to have to take care of that.
I didn't forget. It was exactly where I thought it was going to be, along with what I thought, some other things. Oh, there's some treats in here. Limited Temptations. All right. Cats took it away. Yes, I did. Okay. Good. Okay, these still have to be deployed real soon now. What are you doing? You're already in this Halloween blanket? I haven't even put it out yet. You gotta wait. Hi! Hi! The blanket already caught a kitty. Look at that. Hey, buddy. Mm. He's looking at me like, what are you doing? Nice knit blanket. Where am I going to put this? I meant to say, I was putting that, as I was putting that book away, I remembered, I meant to say about that, uh, when I was talking about Adam Conover and his take on AI and how, um, you know, he didn't see much of a, of a point in using it for that sort of thing, I felt like that's because he's a writer, you know, like that's what he does, he writes comedy, so obviously that's something that he's greatly skilled in, and the rest of us aren't, and, uh, you know, it's... Um, I think that, that it's just it's just a signifier of that. Like you know, obviously he, that's his perspective because he doesn't uh, it doesn't realize how difficult some of that is for the rest of us. Uh, you know, it's fine. It's, I, I get it too because anybody that's spent a lot of time becoming a professional in something, uh, you tend to forget how far removed you are from the people who aren't. You know how much. Uh, I think that's the, what causes a lot of people to have imposter syndrome. Is they they you just forget like how far you are from somebody that hasn't put the time and study in, and you end up thinking, well, everybody knows this stuff, and I'm just I'm just you know goofing, I'm just faking it, um, even though that's not necessarily the case. So uh, yeah, all right. Hopefully that completed that thought. I don't know. I mean, it's completed because I'm done with it, so, <laughs> all right, that's what you get.